Hey Luke here with CaptainCarb.com and I'm going to talk to you about some really common myths about carp. Now I've traveled around the world and I've talked to fishermen all over the world and fishermen always have these weird little prejudices. Um, there's always one or two species of fish that they just really love to dog on. You know that's a trash fish. Pike are considered a trash fish by many Alaskan fishermen. I remember my brother-in-law uh, who grew up fishing in Cleveland. Uh, he moved up to Alaska and we used to tease him relentlessly for being a trash fisherman because he liked pike and uh, you know we you know, pike are garbage you can't eat them they don't fight they've got too many bones they destroy everything in the water they they just wipe out the ecosystem we had all these great reasons why pike were a trash fish and we would tease my my brother-in-law relentlessly about it until finally one day he convinced us to go trash fishing with him and so we went out and I think I caught 83 pike in one day and just had a ball and they fought great and they tasted great and we loved them. And so it really opened my eyes to like, you know, maybe when people say a fish is a trash fish, it's not really true. You know, we gotta question that. Everywhere has their little quirks. And in North America and Australia, carp are absolutely demonized. They're considered a trash fish, which is weird because both uh, in the US and in Australia, carp were deliberately imported into those countries because they were considered such a valuable fish. But times change, people's tastes change, uh, what's popular changes, and now, you know, carp aren't, aren't beloved. You know, there's only a, a few of us who really appreciate how, how awesome they are. But it's funny because as you hear so many myths and rumors about carp and some of them are based in a little bit of fact some of them are actually true and some of them are just complete nonsense the first thing you have to realize is a lot of people when they're bad mouthing carp they, they are classifying everything that's called a carp as the same fish and this isn't the case um, there's lots of different fish that are called carp and many of them are not even related at all um, so when I'm talking about carp, I'm talking about common carp, okay? Common carp is uh, a fish that's been in the U.S. for close to 200 years. Um, it's native to Western Asia and is found all over the world. There's uh, other kinds of carp, like a mirror carp, which is essentially uh, a common carp that has been bred to have little or no scales. And it was bred this way so that it was easier to, to clean when you were going to eat it. And then there's the koi, um, we have real pretty little koi fish, you know, we're familiar with. Those are just carp that have a genetic mutation that gives them bright, fancy colors. Some of them have fancy tails. People say a koi carp, they're just talking about a carp that has a funny color. There, uh, there's no real difference to the fish other than its color. And you can have koi mirror carp, you can have koi common carp, you can have koi grass carp, you know. There's also what's called crucian carp. Crucian carp, or F1s, are a, a special type of carp. They don't have barbels. They're usually stumpier and fat, uh, fatter bodies, but they're also smaller. You know, a six-pound crucian carp is a you know, massive trophy crucian carp. Goldfish are actually a type of crucian carp. So in the U.S., when you see what people call a crucian carp or an F1, usually what it is is somebody's let their pet goldfish go into the water or they've been using goldfish as catfish bait and they've gotten loose and they've started breeding and then they've crossbred with common carp and that's that's what you find mostly in the US when when people talk about crucian carp or F1 carp. There's also a fish called an emure or grass carp and this isn't related at all to the common carp. It's got a longer, more slender body than common carp. It generally gets bigger than a common carp. It's not uncommon to see 60, 80 pound um, uh, grass carp. They get huge. Um, and they eat different things, they behave differently, and the laws are very, very different. So for instance, in Kentucky, it's illegal to kill grass carp. Many states, it's illegal to kill grass carp. In many places, it's illegal to kill grass carp because these carp are um, brought in from China to control weeds. And so what they've done is they've bred a strain of them that are sterile. And so you have this fish that can't breed, but it eats lots of weeds, and they'll release a couple hundred of them into a lake to keep the, the weeds down so that you can still bass fish and things like this. And, and because these fish can't reproduce, every one you kill, they've got to pay money to ship another one in to replace it. 
Also, when people talk about uh, common carp and really demonize them, they're often getting those confused with silver carp and big head carp. Now, common carp and silver carp and common carp and big head carp, they, they're not related. Silver carp and big head carp are called carp, but they're not really carp. They're a different type of species altogether. And those are the ones that you see on YouTube jumping out of the water and landing in boats. They're the ones that have been released into the Mississippi accidentally back in the 70s or 80s and have just been spreading like crazy and, and causing uh, a lot of concern. This is a completely different fish than the common carp we're talking about. Additionally, there's black carp. Black carp look a little bit like a grass carp. Um, they were brought into the United States to uh, eat zebra mussels, which are an invasive species of fish, uh, mussels that are really causing problems in the, the Northeast. And there was a big flood and the fish got loose and they got into the Mississippi and uh, that's, that's all she wrote. So now there's these, um, these black carp loose in uh, a lot of our major waterways. And once again, those are a completely different species than common carp. They're more closely related to a grass carp. One of the myths I hear most common is that carp make the water muddy or more turbid. Turbidity is the technical term for water clarity. The more turbid or the higher the turbidity, the, the muckier the water is, the harder it is to see through it. So people believe that because carp root around in the bottom and they kick up mud as they feed, that this causes turbidity, makes the water muddy. Well, there's been a lot of scientific research on this, and I've read six different scientific papers on it, and three of them found that carp did not increase turbidity, and three of them found that they did. And what it's believed is that the soil conditions, the weather conditions, all affect whether or not carp change turbidity. So if you put carp in a lake, it won't guaranteed make it more uh, turbid or you know muddy. It has to be a special kind of soil and certain kind of weather conditions for carp to have any effect on the water clarity. That's why if you go over to Europe and lots of places in the US, you'll see these beautiful crystal clear lakes full of carp and there's fabulous carp fishing and you can snorkel in there and it's no problem. Additionally, other fish like catfish also increase turbidity. So in these studies, they also added other fish and said, okay, we're gonna take this pond and we're gonna put catfish instead of carp in it and see what happens. Sure enough, the turbidity went up as well in some conditions. Other research also looked at whether this change in turbidity affected things like the plants and the bass populations and other game fish. And once again, it was a mixed result. A lot of these papers found that even though the carp increased the turbidity, it didn't negatively affect the other fish. One of the number one reasons people justify killing and throwing away carp and really hating on carp is that they're an invasive species. Well, this isn't true. This is a really common myth. There's uh, native species, there's invasive species, and there's what's called naturalized species. Carp are not an invasive species, they're a naturalized species. So let me explain. Fish that are not from an area that are introduced, after a while, they may or may not reach an equilibrium with their ecosystem and then become part of the eco ecosystem. They never become truly native, but what uh, the biologists do is they call it naturalized. So a non-native fish that's kind of become part of the ecosystem and has become in harmony with the ecosystem, that's a naturalized species. A, a species that's in an ecosystem and it's going crazy, it's, it's expanding, it's taking over, it's causing problems, that's called an invasive species. Carp are not an invasive species, at least common carp are not an invasive species in the United States. Silver carp, Asian carp, black carp, those are an invasive species because they have not reached equilibrium and they're causing problems. Common carp have been in this country for over almost 200 years and they've reached equilibrium and they're now part of the ecosystem. So they're what's called naturalized. And lots of our favorite game fish are what we call naturalized species, just like carp. So for instance, I live in Virginia, and in Virginia, blue catfish are not native. They're a naturalized species. Smallmouth bass are a naturalized species. Rainbow trout, brown trout are a naturalized species. Uh, muskie, walleye are a naturalized species. And in some parts of the state, largemouth bass and flathead catfish are naturalized species. So there's lots of our favorite game fish are not from this area, but they've reached equilibrium with the ecosystem. They're part of the ecosystem. They're here to stay. They're naturalized. 
that's what common carp are. So they're not invasive, they're naturalized. The, one of the myths that uh, I hear a lot is that carp eat bass eggs or they eat you know, crappie eggs or whatever fish that person cares about, they say that carp eat them and destroy them. Uh, once again, the answer is that's technically true, but it's not the full story. Carp are omnivores, they'll eat anything. They will eat baby fish, they'll eat fish eggs, but it's not a major part of their diet in most places, okay? So yeah, they will eat them, but do they affect it? That's the real question. And there's been a lot of research on that issue, whether or not carp affect bass populations or other game fish populations. And once again, what they did is they took these ponds that were full of bass and bluegill and crappie, and then they, they added a specific number of carp and these different ponds and measured the population density of carp, and they measured the population density of the other game fish. And in these research papers, they actually found that in most situations, the population of bass and, and crappie went up slightly, okay? So instead of carp destroying or hurting the bass populations, they actually helped it a little bit. This is small amounts, uh, but they helped it. So there's a lot of reasons for this, and one of the big reasons is that carp are breeding machines. Uh, a single female carp can lay two million eggs in a single year, and in one year, a baby carp can get up to eight inches. So that's a lot of biomass, that's a lot of food in the water, and that's what bass eat. They eat baby carp. Crappie eat baby carp. So instead of, so yeah, carp will eat bass eggs, but more importantly, bass really, really like to eat carp. <laughs> baby carp and so if you put a bunch of carp in there the big ones more or less leave the bass alone and the little ones are food for the bass one of the rumors I hear all the time is that people think carp pollute the water they destroy water quality well the problem isn't that carp destroy water quality it's that bad water quality help carp carp are much less sensitive to pollution than other game fish especially when it comes to oxygen levels carp can thrive in very, very low oxygen levels that would kill off other fish. And one of the major causes of pollution is agricultural runoff, you know, fertilizer, livestock feces, this stuff gets washed off and goes into our water systems, causes algae blooms, and the oxygen levels go way down and we have fish kills. Well, these fish kills kill things like bass, crappie, perch, trout, pike, more sensitive fish, but it doesn't kill the uh, carp. So what happens is the carp's natural predators and the carp's competitors get killed off and they're left alone unchecked and their populations explode. So when you pollute a lake, you tend to end up with lots and lots of carp because nothing else can survive. So it's not the carp that caused the pollution, it's the pollution that caused the carp. And what happens is that people think they can solve the problem by killing the carp. So they go out there with bows and they shoot the carp or they catch the carp and throw them in the bushes or they have commercial fishermen come in and kill all this carp, but the water's still polluted and the game fish can't recover. And it's only a temporary solution because eventually the carp breed and come back because there's still no predators. If instead you take a polluted lake and you improve the water quality, then the carp's natural predators can come back and they can do what they do best, and that is eat a lots of baby carp, and they can check the carp. Another really common myth is that carp eat and destroy vegetation, and this is kind of true. So one thing, though, to keep clear is that grass carp will eat living vegetation. Common carp do not. Common carp will eat dead and decaying vegetation, but not living vegetation. However, they still do cause harm to vegetation. When carp feed, they like to root around in the bottom, and this tends to uproot vegetation. Now, whether or not this is a bad thing is another debate. They don't tend to wipe out all the vegetation, but if they reduce it a little bit, maybe that's good, maybe that's bad. There's certainly a lot of lakes where fishermen would prefer there to be less weeds. In other places, the weeds play a really important role in the ecosystem, and reducing the weeds hurts the fish uh, population and hurts things that we don't want to be hurt. So it's a little bit more complicated. One thing I, I hear a lot from people who don't fish is they'll say, oh, carp eat mud, they, they eat mud. 
Uh, well, they don't really eat mud. Uh, carp eat things that live in mud, that's for sure. And when they're looking for things like clams and aquatic insects and, and things like that, they're often in the, in the mud or on the bottom and they'll go around and they'll suck the, the things they're trying to eat. They'll feel they have these really sensitive mouths and they'll root through the, through the ground like a pig with their nose. And when they find something, they'll suck it up and then blow out the debris. Because of this, uh, it makes the blowback hair rig a really effective carp rig. The rig is designed so that when they, they feel the bait with their sensitive little mouths, they don't feel the hook and they suck it up. And when they blow out that debris, it goes and sticks that hook point right in their bottom lip, right where you want it to be. And it's a very effective rig. But do carp uh, eat mud? No. They eat things in, in the mud? Yes. A lot of people who don't uh, fish are, will say, oh, you know, carp, they're bottom feeders. And this is not true. Carp are a really versatile fish. They'll fish all throughout the water col column. Anybody uh, who's really into carp fishing will tell you this. Surface fishing for carp is a really popular and exciting way to catch a carp. One of the most popular and effective rigs to catch carp amongst people who are really serious about it is the zig rig. Um, a zig rig is a lure that you use to catch carp in between the surface and the bottom. So you have this lure that floats off the bottom anywhere from the middle of the column to right under the surface and you can catch a load of carp there because carp spend a lot of time eating floating insects and floating snails in the middle of the water column. So carp are definitely not exclusively bottom feeders. They feed the bottom, they feed the top, and they feed everywhere in between. A lot of people will tell you uh, that you can't eat a carp. They're just disgusting, they're un inedible. Carp are actually a really popular fish to eat all over the world. That's why they were introduced to the US. That's why they're introduced into Australia. It's because people wanted to eat carp. They wanted to have fresh carp to eat. So they wanted to import them into these new countries and, and bring the tradition of eating carp with them. Uh, eating a Christmas carp is a, is a very old tradition in Eastern Europe and Western Eurasia. And in the uh, central northern part of the U.S., smoked carp is uh, an old tradition. Lots of people grew up eating and preparing smoked carp. One of the things uh, that you'll hear from people in the know is that wild carp taste muddier than pen-raised or farm-raised carp. And so this is one of the things that's led to, to this myth is that you, know, you take these, these carp, people in Eastern Europe are used to eating farm-raised carp, and they would release the carp in the U.S. and catch a wild carp, and they go, oh, this doesn't taste as good. This is because of the environment, that what they're eating. And if you clean out their system, they'll actually be a lot less money. You'll taste more like a pen-raised carp. So this flushing out the carp system has led to a tradition of keeping carp in the bathtub before Passover amongst Jews. Um, there's a Jewish dish, I, I think it's called gefilt, G-E-F-I-L-T-E, I'm not pronouncing that right. I'm not Jewish. I don't. I don't know. But but uh, for Passover, they'll, they'll eat a fish. And, and in Eastern Europe, that was traditionally a carp. And about a week before Passover, you would take the carp and put it in your bathtub and keep the fish in your bathtub to flush it out and to get you know, all the, the the mud out of its system, so they would improve the taste for Passover. Also, there's a mud vein that runs along the length of the fillet of the carp, about high up on the fillet, and you want to remove that uh, mud vein before you cook. Now, if you're gonna just smoke the fish like we do in the US, well, I mean, you don't really need to worry about that. You know, smoking makes anything taste fabulous. Well, hopefully you like this video, and if you'd like to see more great videos from Cats and Carp, check out these videos right here. I've got a playlist on how to catch carp with all the videos and tutorials you need to learn about how to catch carp, and I've got this video with my 15 favorite carp baits. So anyway, thanks for watching, and we got new videos every week, so don't forget to click subscribe.